Historians are taught to interrogate sources. They compare as many different sources and historical perspectives as they can find. And this is a skill that when you master it, will open up a window into the past. So how do we get started? When undertaking a historical inquiry, we need several different skills. We need to be able to write inquiry questions, research, locate and identify historical sources, and finally, to analyze the sources that we have found. We have videos to help you with all of these skills, but in this video, we're gonna explore the process of analyzing history like a historian. Analyzing history involves looking at the context, perspectives, and use. So today we're gonna to take a quick look at these stages and then go through an example. When analyzing historical sources and perspectives, we first wanna understand their context. Knowing this context is the first step in confirming if and how we can use these sources in our historical inquiry. If the source is from the wrong time period or location, we'll know it probably isn't relevant to us. But if it does line up, it can be analyzed as part of our inquiry. To find this out, we begin with some basic contextual questions. Who is the author or creator? When was it created? Where was it created and or used? What was its purpose? Is it unusual or an outlier in some way? The who, when and where questions will be the first ones we look at. If it's a primary source, like an object, museums, galleries or archives should have this information publicly available. If it's a secondary source, like a written article, the publisher should list this information. The what question will be our next angle. Just because a source existed in the right time or place, or was written by a researcher who often writes about that particular time period, doesn't mean that it's automatically useful to our research. You wouldn't need a 17th century cooking implement in a discussion about music. Considering the uniqueness of a source is important to its context. For example, if a photograph is ripped in half or damaged, or a set of shoes have been painted gold. We might make a note of this in our analysis. Causes of uniqueness could be useful to our investigation. So, now we've looked at a source's context, we can move on to its perspectives. Perspectives intentionally and unintentionally shape the sources that we encounter. So, we consider them in order to understand why the sources are the way they are. There are two things to analyze. First, what is the historical context? And second, does the source have an agenda or bias? Historical context is what was happening in the location of the source at the time that it was made or used. Was there a big world event like a war? Were there particular social norms? For instance, children in the workforce. Context affects the sources we encounter. So we need to keep it in mind to understand why a source might've existed or being used in the way that it was. Agenda and bias can affect a source in similar ways. They both relate to the creator of the source, be that an individual, a company, or a group of people. Agenda and bias are both related to beliefs or worldviews, and these beliefs and worldviews shape the actions, creations, and words of the creator. So hence, they shape the historical source. The key difference between the two is that agenda is intentional and bias is often unintentional or unconscious. So you'll probably need to understand the creator's historical context as well as their social standing in that context to analyze their potential agendas and biases. Finally, we look at how we can use the sources that we've found. For each source, you should ask yourself the following questions. Is the source reliable? Why or why not? Does it back up or challenge other sources? How? And what part of my inquiry does it support? Don't forget that you need multiple sources to back up your historical inquiry. We recommend using at least three sources per sub argument. Now that we've learned about the three stages of analysis, it's time to see it in action. My research question is, explain how the industrial revolution in Britain affected migration to and the culture of South Australia in the mid 1800s. So I'll be looking for sources to help me with this. This is my first source. It's a primary source that I found on South Australia's state history collection online. So let's analyze this, this source using this worksheet. Starting with its context, I'm looking for the answers to these questions. Who is the author or creator? It's not listed, but presumably a miner or a mining company. 
When was it created? It was created in the 1850s. Where was it created and or used? South Australia, specifically Moonta, Burra and or Kapunda. What was its purpose? I can see the purpose written here, but I'm gonna make sure to write it in my own words so that I don't plagiarize this site later on. This object is called a mining spider. It was used in South Australian copper mines to light the mine, leaving the miners free to use both of their hands to dig. Is it unusual or an outlier in some way? It seems that this is a typical object without features that would be different to other mining tools that existed at the time. Because this context matches my inquiry question, I can move forward with my analysis. From my research on the SA History Hub, I have learned about the context. An economic downturn in the 1840s in Cornwall, combined with campaigns to encourage migration to the new colony of South Australia, led to many Cornish people migrating and taking jobs in the mines. Does the source have an agenda or bias? There is no obvious agenda in this item. However, the nature of the tool only relates to miners and thus does not speak to the story of any other people in South Australia at the time. Now, let's look at the use of this source. How will you use this source? This source is evidence of migration, lifestyle and industry in South Australia in the 1850s. I'm gonna use it to support my inquiry into the migration history and culture of South Australia in that period. Is the source reliable? The source is part of the collection of the History Trust of South Australia and the Migration Museum. These institutions both have solid reputations and are trustworthy. Does it back up or challenge other sources? How? Yes, this source aligns with the SA History Hub article discussing Cornish migration. What part of my inquiry does it support? This item speaks to an industry in South Australia that British migrants were part of. It doesn't in itself relate to the Industrial Revolution or the culture of South Australia, so more research will be needed in those areas. So there we have it. This source is one useful piece of the puzzle to help me in my inquiry, but more sources are needed. To sum up, historical analysis involves assessing the context, perspective, and use of a source. And analyzing sources will show you what you know and what you have yet to find out. It's an essential part of a historical inquiry.